Okay. We have our cassette tape recorder going, and we have our digital recorder going. And between the two of them, we should have one good sound recording of this interview. Uh, this Veterans History Project interview is being conducted on August the 15th, 2007, here at the Niles Public Library. My name is Neil O'Shea, and I'm speaking with Mr. Irvin C. Blazinski. Uh, Mr. Blazinski was born in Chicago, and he now lives here uh, in the community of Niles, and he has kindly consented to be interviewed for this project here at his local library. Um, Mr. Blazinski, may I refer to you, may I address you as Irv? Yes. Thank you. Um, so if we can turn back the hands of time, as it were, <laughs> go back now. Um, when did you enter uh, the military service? In 42. In 42. Yeah. And did you enlist or were you drafted? No, I enlisted in the Coast Guard. And um, why did you choose the Coast Guard? Uh, well, I originally wanted to go into the Marines, but I wore glasses, and they uh. wouldn't accept me. So they told me that the, uh, the uh, Coast Guard was waving the glasses, so that's how I joined the Coast Guard. And had you worn glasses in school, and with, yeah. you, since you were young, yeah, much younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what high school did you attend, if I may ask? DePaul Academy. Oh, the academy. Yeah. Yeah, down there in Sheffield and Belden. And Kenmore. Or, Kenmore, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The um, so were you living down in that uh, Link North Lincoln Park? Neighborhood at that time. Not then? really. Uh, I I lived in um, uh, Ashland and North Avenue. That's where I was born and raised. Yeah. Had any of your had anybody in your family served in the First World War? No. Not that I know. Of. Yeah. So a lot of your um, a lot of your friends did they also enlist or? Oh yes. There was quite a few. You didn't wait, you just enlisted, yeah. 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 Were you, I think you mentioned that you were 20 years of age when you entered uh, the Coast Guard. Yeah. So you had been out of high school for a couple of years then, maybe, yeah. is that right? right? What were you doing uh, after high school? Uh, I was working in, in a factory, and I wasn't very happy with it, you know, and... Uh, I was glad to get to, to leave. <laughs> did your did the people at home at your in in your house did did they think it was a good idea you were enlisting in the oh, service? Yes. Did they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you weren't worried or anything like that or no. fearful? No. I was worried that they wouldn't take me. You wanted to get in there. That's the attitude of the people at that time. Yeah. And then. Um, where did you uh, did you have to go to Fort Sheridan or where was the where no, you inducted? I I, I, um, I went downtown to the train station, and they took me to Manhattan, Manhattan, New York. Well, they called it Manhattan Beach. That was a training station for the Coast Guard. That's where I started. Yeah, the. Um, so was that the first time you had been outside the city of Chicago? I suppose, yes. That must have been pretty exciting, taking your train oh, yeah. to New York. Yeah, but you know how long that train took? No. We said, like, oh, it was a, uh, well, it, it was a long ride, you know, because the, 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 all the uh, freight trains and everything were priority to us, you know. So it took a while. So in the uh, in the Coast Guard, do you go through some kind of basic training? Oh yeah, basic, yeah. In, uh, and that was in New York or Manhattan Beach. Is that where right. the basic training yeah. was? I was so homesick. If you look at the date that I went in, I went in twelve seventeen. 
Oh, well, yeah. A week before Christmas. And, uh, in fact, I met, uh, I met my uh, friend in Manhattan Beach, and I was so happy to see him, and he says, I'm shipping out today, oh. <laughs> the first day. So... Was that a buddy from the old neighborhood or from school? He lives right here. Oh, and another, yeah. Another one. Mm. Uh, there's two two fellows that are uh, that uh, were in the Coast Guard that live here in Niles. Yeah. So basic training for the Coast Guard, is that done on a ship or is it done on land? On land. Well, first of all, uh, we went to... Uh, the firing range and uh, all of the uh, right on the on the base, you know, and then uh, then I uh, I was they they want they put us in a, in a in a private home in Sea Isle City, New Jersey. It's on the Atlantic coast, and we were doing guard duty. We were doing guard duty for the. Uh, for the uh, along the ocean, you know, because see they they picked up they picked up some people uh, from the German sub that were trying to get in our country at that time. So we had patrols day and night all along the Atlantic coast. So the basic training lasted probably was it six weeks or eight? Yeah, weeks? six weeks. But it wasn't much of anything, you know. You went for swimming classes for a couple of days, but it it wasn't. Uh, so you 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 probably could already swim. Yeah. You weren't afraid of the water. Yeah. 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 So, would would your would the the fact that you wore glasses would that have kept you out of the navy too, or not? Or could yes, you? The, the navy also didn't want anybody. So there must have been a lot of people in the Coast Guard with glasses, weren't there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then they all eased up, and they all accepted with glasses, you know, mm. the Marines and everybody. So after this period of basic training in, in mm -hmm. around Sea Isle, New Jersey, or yeah. wherever, did you get assigned to a unit or a ship, or...? No, uh, no I won't. I went to Seattle City, and then from there we went to Norfolk, Virginia, to form uh, crews for the uh, for uh, for the destroyer escorts that we were going to man. See, we we owned uh, we the Coast Guard didn't own any ships, uh, not that that type of ship. The a Navy owned them, and they. We, we manned 40 ships for the uh, for the Navy. You know, in other words, we it was all Coast Guard personnel on the ship. See, and it was a it was a Navy ship, but it was manned by a Coast Guard. I see officers and everything. And then uh, we went to uh, oh, we went. To a lot of training in Norfolk while we were waiting for our ship to be built. It was being built in Galveston, Texas. And and then uh, after uh, our ship was ready, we uh, they formed the crew right there. You know, they, they put us all in and uh, sent us to Galveston and we boarded the ship. You boarded the ship in Galveston. Yeah, and then we started our uh, what they call shakedown. That means that they put the ship through all kinds of uh, maneuvers, and we we went to Bermuda for that, you know. And uh, then we started our uh, uh, I, that booklet that tells you where we started and. You know. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Lazinski is kindly uh, uh, giving us a copy of the history of the, the USS Rhodes. Yeah, see. Destroyer Escort 384, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. See, this was our skipper. And then uh, 
he was the next skipper, and then this was the last skipper. So you were the first crew on this new ship? Yeah, it was brand new. And did it have any things wrong with it, or was it okay from the beginning? Well, or? it was a little mix and mix, but nothing major, you know. So how big was the crew on, on the... Uh, uh, I think we had uh, a crew of something like 235 on there. So, so this ship carried uh, guns and... Oh, uh, uh, it was complete. Complete. We went, out, <coughs> we went out, what they call for a shakedown, and we... Um, the, the shakedown was going through all the maneuvers of wartime, yeah. see, and uh, after that we then we started uh, escorting convoys across the ocean. When you were in Norfolk, were you in were you in staying and mixing with Navy personnel? Oh yeah. How did they? What did they think of you guys? Was there any friction Nothing. between Coast Guard and Navy? No. No, not no problem. Before you um, went down to Galveston to get on the new ship, did you get a chance to come home or anything like that? No. 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 Straight out. The first time I came home, I can't even remember now. Yeah. Uh, they worked it out uh, between convoys that we could go home for 30 days. That, and I, I don't even... I mean, I'm, I'm poor at records. When when this guy gave me this all these records, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So did you have a duty on the ship or a, a title oh, yeah. or a? Well, I started as a first class seaman, and uh, and then uh, I uh, then I was a jacket of dust. What a jacket of dust is is he took the food from the. Uh, hole and, and give it to the kitchen, well, the galley. And uh, when, every day they give you an order of what they needed. And that was my job. Jacket dust. Yeah, jacket of dust. Jacket of dust. The yeah. dust. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting term. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I never had, uh, I never had a problem getting help. Because everybody wanted to get down that hole to get some food. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you joined the coast the Coast Guard, did you think you'd wind up serving like a Navy person out at sea with convoys? Did you think? Oh that? yeah. Oh, you knew that yeah, was coming. I was. I uh, that was my idea. Yeah. So, you're uh, you join up in um, December of forty two. Yeah. And then when do you go out to sea then? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I don't really have, uh, yeah, I see the, let's see, uh, see it was launched in uh, 40, June of 43, and uh, and commissioned the same city on October 20th as a product of the uh, pro uh, product of the Brown Shipping Company. Yeah. So you probably had uh, like 10 or 11 months to get ready oh, between yeah. the training and oh, the yeah, it, was, yeah, it didn't go overnight. <laughs> yeah, you know. it didn't go overnight. No. During the trips, while well, I'm trying to see if they put down. Uh, If they put down when we made our first trip. So the first trip, you were probably escorting um, ships. Yeah, yeah. supply yeah, those ships. Those pictures of all those ships. There was airplanes on there and everything on those ships. And where were the where were they all going? How, how many you think there were on there? One of, one of those convoys, 150, 200 ships. Wow, wow. And we were we were escorting them, and we were on the outside, protecting them from submarines. That's the whole thing. And and you were heading for at that time. Yeah, uh, England. The, or the or first or? one was Casablanca, wow. North Africa. Cool. Yeah, and when we got there, there was six inches of diesel oil on it because they just they just 
bombarded the uh, Germans and chased them out of Casablanca. And there was sunken ships all over the place when we got in there. Did you have any shore leave when you were in Casablanca? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we went to shore. That must have been interesting. Yeah. And how? <laughs> it was a different kind of life. I bet. And it was more, you know, it was, a, it was very, um, poverty was very, uh, how would I say it? Uh, Evident or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, wherever we went, we went ashore. Yeah. You know, but the food was pretty good on the ship. Oh yeah, you didn't lose any weight when you went in the Coast Guard, did you? Some they, guys. They didn't have K rations on our ship. You ate well. <laughs> yeah, that was the best thing. I tell you, if I uh, it was up to me, if my children wanted to go in the service, I'd tell them go in the Navy. It was so much better, you know. Yeah. The um, so on that first on that convoy to to Casablanca, were there any? Uh, did the Germans threaten you at no, all? No, no, not that one. But there was one when we went through the uh, Mediterranean that were, we were attacked by German planes, and, but they knew that they were coming. You know, because we knew the intelligence told us. And then where did you where did you dock in the Mediterranean? Then uh, did you have to? Uh, uh, we went. In, well, let me see here. You know, this is fifty years ago. You know, <laughs> and turning back the hands of time. Well, this is uh, here. See, according to this, uh, we went to um, we went to New York, uh, escorted a New York section of the Norfolk. Oh, we had four anti-submarine attacks on that uh, tour. You know, I mean that. Uh, when we were taking those ships across. You know, we were called, you know, we're more like a, a killer group. We we just about wiped out the, the uh, submarine, not our ship, but there was 400 that were built for for submarine warfare. See, the, the destroyer escort was designed to fight the submarine. Ah, and there were 400 of, of those ships built. Yeah, there was 400 of them, and uh, the Navy had the most of them, and we had 40 of them. 40? Yeah. It looks like you might have landed in Tunisia. Huh? It looks like you might have landed in Tunisia. This is Bizzardi here. Yeah. And Tunisia. Yeah. That's that's right down the coast. Right, right, right yeah. down the coast. Yeah. Mm hmm Well that must if have been you, another if you read all these here you'll see. Yeah. That must have been another interesting place to come to stop uh, Tunisia. Huh? That must have been interesting also, oh, all yeah. these places. Mm -hmm. It it was unreal, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. We were going into town, and I, I don't remember, who, because we went to Africa a couple of times, you know, so, and um, we were, were wanting to go into town, so we went on, a, on the highway, and we were hitching a ride, and uh, a, a big truck, like an army truck, you know, with uh, personnel on there in the back, you know, and and these were all these big, um, they were black, but they weren't considered black. They were uh, from Africa. These guys were twice our size, you know, and, and they were so gentle to us, it wasn't funny. <laughs> so, uh, 
if you if you read all this here, you'll get a good idea. Of yeah, I think that would be very helpful if we add that chronology to the uh, to your remarks. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I see that you might have even gone up to Ireland, did you? you oh yeah, Northern we Ireland. Ireland. You know what happened? When we went to Ireland. We escorted a uh, a, a uh, aircraft carrier, and uh, actually we were going to Wales. Oh yes. And and uh, the right at the buoy, there was a submarine sitting there. And when we, uh, our orders were just to bring it to the buoy and then go go back to where we were coming from, and uh, it, a tor it, tor it hit uh, a torpedo hit it from that submarine. But uh, I don't know what happened because we we our orders were not to go back, you know. The so the torpedo hit the aircraft carrier. Yeah. Oh. And they said, "Don't worry, there was and there was no damage, you know." So the, the aircraft carrier went into Wales. I'd have to read this whole thing to remind myself of all this, you know. But you were you, everywhere. You, know, you were everywhere. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're up in London, Derry. Yeah. Yeah. You probably that's. Oh, uh, that's beautiful there. Oh, you know. It, it, you know, it was in the middle of winter, and you pulled alongside, and, and I don't remember, but the whole side of the mountain was green, and the other side was snow. <laughs> yeah, this thing tells a lot of stories. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's jam-packed with, uh, with details. You know, this, and you were in all these places. That's amazing. Did you ever any, did you ever get seasick? Did you have any trouble adjusting to well, a little bit? Well, woozy, you know, and that. But there were some people that they had to take off the ship. Yeah. That's how bad they were. As soon as they, as soon as they say, lift the anchor, these guys would be sick as the dogs. Yeah. They were fine when we were in port. <laughs> <laughs> and then, if they, if you got the word that there was a German plane or something. Did did everybody have to everybody, get a gun or something? Every or? day turns to uh, with the uh, um, with the uh, guns. You know, like I was on the. Uh, I'm, I'm, let me see if I got a picture here. Uh, I was on the number two gun. The number two gun. Mm -hmm. That was in. I, I should give you a better picture of our ship, you know. Yeah, we'll have to get a, a picture of the of the ropes for this the one here, for the transcript. This is transferring a doctor from one ship to another in a you know, uh, on a buoy. You know, do you, do you ever see one of these buoys? They Not cross like a that. line and cross Oh them. right, yeah. yeah. Oh right. This they was at sea. Yeah, it'd be hard to transfer personnel at sea from one ship to another, right? right? So the easy, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. See, see nobody uh, labeled these pictures, and I have no idea. Yeah. You know. I have a nice picture of our ship. I, 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 I'll give it to you. Yeah, we'll make a copy of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring one with me. But you, uh, when uh, you say you're going to be gone for a week? Yeah. Okay, then I, in the meantime, I'll be working on it. Okay. And then I'll call you. Thank you. So did you, it says the crew was granted liberty in Londonderry, Northern Ireland. Did you, did you go ashore then in oh, Derry? Oh, yeah. yeah did you enjoy, so you enjoyed yeah, that? The, we had the fish and chips. Yeah. You know, people were walking down the street eating fish and chips. Yeah. You know, it's just like a McDonald's here, yeah. you know. But everybody, oh, their, their, their potatoes are great. You know, it's, I don't know why they are so famous. I guess it must be the soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely dairy on the banks of the foil. Yeah. And then you mentioned that it's, uh, in here, it, it was a terrible... Uh, Full gale winds and tremendous seas. Were you, were you frightened then? Oh yeah, because 
the the uh, the swells of the ocean were going over the ship, and we didn't. And we were in the English Channel, and, and we didn't think we were going to get out of it. That's how bad it was. I'm I'm surprised that the ships didn't break in half. You know that that ocean was so bad. So then, it. As things are winding down in Europe, um, you head back toward the United States, right? Yeah. But then you got another half the world to go to, right? Because yeah, then you we go. Yeah, we went. Uh, we went um, to. We went to the English Channel to go to the uh, Pacific. You know, uh, uh, does it say in there? It says you were down in Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. Huh? You were visited Guantanamo Bay in well, Cuba. Well, that was when we were uh, when we got a brand new ship and we were um, we were uh, what shakedown crews. In other words, we were testing the ship. Was it was this was the new ship also the Rhodes was also yeah. Uh -huh. Why did they change the ship? Was it damaged or they just no, what, what do you mean change? When you said you got the new ship. No, no. When we first got the ship out of the shipyard, they, oh. we went to Bermuda and Guantanamo Bay as a cruise, you know, and we were doing all kinds of, uh, of, um, uh, of exercises. Yeah. You know, then they had planes flying over, and, and they had this sleeve, you know, did you ever see one of those sleeves? And then you were you sh were shooting at the sleeve, you know. Oh, it pulls it through the air. Yeah. I yes. It was it was just a exercise to get us used to yeah. firing those guns. Yeah. Well, then when you went to the Pacific, did you go back down there past Cuba to the Panama Canal and then out into the Pacific Ocean to no, get to not China? That I no. Know of. no. Well, let me see what, if there's anything in here. Yeah. I just wonder how you got over into China. Well, well, yeah. We, first, we went to the Aleutians. We were in the Aleutians for a while, and we were doing what they call plane guard duty, and because they were bombarding Japan, and uh, those planes knocked down, and then our job was to get the pilots out of the water. I'm trying to see. Oh. Oh, this is uh, this is when we were coming back. Oh, here. Well, right. Yeah, March of '45. You leave. Uh, yeah. Southampton, England. I'm trying to find out when we went into the. Uh, see, here we went to Wales. Oh yes, Cardiff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We didn't go to Guantanamo Bay. We went there <coughs> after... Um, yeah, perhaps you went by there on the way to the Panama Canal. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out when we went to Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, they got a date it's, here. Uh, of, yeah, uh, yeah, June 45. 45. That yeah. Was, Almost the war was almost over. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why it sounds like they're they're redeploying people from the Atlantic to the Pacific or something. We we were playing. Yeah, I see, this is the one uh, weather patrol that was up in the Aleutians at two. And then, you know, here, they don't tell this in there, but we anchored in Hitchin Cook, Isle, in Alaska, and we were, you know, that's when MacArthur flew from Washington <coughs> to 
to Tokyo to sign the papers for the signing of the and you know they had ships all along if anything happened to his plane there was a ship there in the water do you realize how much that cost all the way across they yeah. had ships and then ready. they show him getting uh, walking in the water and you know remember those oh it, i have returned yet yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and I I talked to some people that were there, and they said that he didn't have to get in the water. <laughs> you know, I mean. Yeah, it seemed like he had an eye for uh, oh, a, a good camera. photograph. Yeah. yeah, he knew how well it would play. Yeah, and see, in 1946, we came back through the Panama and went to uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And then the pirates same thing. That's when I got off the ship because they were going to put it in mothballs. You know what they meant by mothballs, storing it. You know that that was uh, when we got to Charleston. That was the last of the ship. That was in '46. Like I say, you could make a big story out of this. Just these ports that I'm telling you about, you know. Right, yeah. Yeah. What did you say from Casablanca to China, right? Huh? You said from Casablanca to China. Right. Yeah. So you were in, uh, <coughs> you you arrived in Okinawa? Yeah. In Tsingtao? Tsingtao was China. Yeah. That must have been... Uh, an eye opener. Or oh yeah, we went. We went right. Uh, we we got on. <laughs> we we went up the Chinese. What was that river? I can't remember. Uh, it doesn't. Let's see. It doesn't say that in here. But we were going to um, uh, for liberty. When we got to China, you know, the war was over, you know, and we were an army of occupation. And uh, so we, they were giving us the liberty to go up into, uh, into the Tsingtao. That was a big city, like, you know. And uh, the, so we had to take an LST down the river to, uh, to Tsingtao. And uh, spend the, and so the the, the uh, cooks fixed us sandwiches, you know, and they put pounds of butter, you know, just a hunk of butter on there, and uh, so when we got on the train uh, to go to uh, get off the uh, LST and we got on the train, we. Uh, we were passing out the sandwiches among, and there was a lot of the, uh, Chinese people on there too, uh, on this train. And this one guy was looking at us, and and they, he saw that butter, and and we said, you know, we couldn't talk to them. We didn't know how to talk to them, but we gave him, and he started eating it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of. Oh, you should see the beautiful stuff we bought in China to take home. Uh, everything was silk. You know, I bought a Kamon uh, house coat for my sister uh, at the time, and uh, I sent it to her. She couldn't wear it out. That was pure silk, you know. Is that where you saw the um, the rickshaw? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how much a day was it? To, how much was it to 35 rent? 35 cents a day. And he stayed there from morning till night. Wow. If you went into your hotel, he sat there. Yeah. But then the army of occupation had come in there, and they ruined everything. They said throwing money around like water, and everything was so expensive then. Yeah. So when... Um So you must have all been really happy to learn that the war was coming to an end, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you enlisted, so you had to serve a particular length of time because you had enlisted. You have to serve four years or 
active duty or inactive? Well, I or? can't remember. No, I wasn't in there for four years. No, though. about three and a half maybe. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And uh, well, I uh, the only thing I know is that when I was in China, my orders to to be discharged was come through, and I. Uh, uh, and yeah, and my orders, but see, they could, they held us what, for 90 days, in other words, they, they, when your orders came through, they, they couldn't take everybody and send them home, because they needed somebody to run the ship, Yeah. You know? so uh, they, I was held back 90 days, and then when we were in, uh, in China, um, my orders came through, and then, and so did the ship's orders come through that they are were going to go home. So the captain called me in and said, "You know, I know uh, we could put you ashore here, and you take your chances how you're going to get home, <laughs> because you know you could get on a on a, a, a aircraft, you could get on a, a freighter. You you don't know what you know." I said, "No, I'll stay with the ship," and I stayed with the ship. All the, till we got to South, South Carolina. You saw you for those uh, between those ages, they were like twenty and uh, twenty-three and a half. You saw so much of the world and covered yeah. so many miles. No, well, we went in. We were in England. We went to New uh, London and everything. It was. It must have been a wonderful experience. Yeah. You know, like one guy said to me, he says, it's a wonderful experience, but I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Were there any uh, very funny moments you remember or uh, well, any memorable experiences? That there was a lot of funny things, but I can't... Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you ever go back to any of those places that you visited? No. Not a, not across the ocean, no. Would I, you want to go back if you could go back to any of those places? I would love to go back to where? All of them or some of them? Or? No, I never did. Never. Because, <clears throat> well, I wasn't married at the time, but uh, I had no interest in going back. You know, yeah. not at that time. So, you stay with the uh, the USS Rhodes back to Charleston. Charleston. And, and then I, you're mustered out there or discharged? At uh, and, no, they put us on a train and took us to Detroit. Detroit? And that was our discharge point. And they uh, gave us a uh, uh, fare to go home, you know. In fact, I was, I don't know if I took it with me. I, I, I just saw it today. I didn't even know I had it. It was a... Uh, Ticket to go from uh, uh, South Carolina, no, from Detroit to Chicago on a train, you know. And you know, I don't even remember uh, who met me at the train station, you know. Your family must have been delighted. Did they meet you at the station, your family? Uh, that's what I say. You I don't, don't remember, remember yeah. this, you know. Yeah. So, did you have any? Uh, did you have a hard time adjusting to adjusting to civilian life? Not really, no. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, 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 I was an electrician, you know, for 40 years, and uh, I, uh, I was just lucky to uh, get, get started in that. And uh, I went to apprentice school and everything, you know. And so you didn't have too hard, too, it wasn't that difficult to find employment then after the war? Or was it a little hard to get a job? Well, you know, they told me that I should go back to my old job. Right. You know, and then they were they they gave me something like three or four weeks vacation that was uh, I was entitled to. So I went there <coughs> and I got the four weeks and then I quit. And my father was in the trucking business and he gave me a job on one of the trucks. And I didn't like it. I said, "Not this is not for me." So, uh, so then uh, I was I was in between going to school for to be a salesman because uh, I went to back to DePaul 
and I wanted to know if I could continue my study, you know, and, uh, and then they suggested that I go into some company, you know, some company that has a sales program that trains you to be salesmen. And, and so uh, my uncle was big in the meatpacking company, uh, and Wilson and Company, I don't know if you ever heard of them. Well, they uh, were a big meatpacking company, and they had a program going. So it was either being, being an electrician or a salesman for uh, meatpacking. And uh, I finally decided I wanted the electrician's job. So that, that, that's what I did. So did you, um, did, you stay in con in, in, did you stay in contact with some of your friends from the Coast Guard, some of your oh, buddies? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I had, the, we, we had 12 reunions. And you know, I I, I start, you know how I started. I met this fellow Galassi. Now, Mr. Galassi, it turns out. Yeah, he, he lives he, in Niles. Yeah. And uh, I went to the church, and they were uh, not to the church, but to this uh, men's meeting, and they. Uh, and and they uh, were discussing uh, reunions, you know, between, you know, there were those tables, you know. And, Surely. And uh, I didn't know him. I didn't know Glassy. I knew this other fellow that was on another ship. His name is uh, Ed Lesniak, but he's uh, in a hospital and he's in bad shape. And uh, he he's the guy I knew. And I said to him, I says, Ed, what are you talking about the Selstrom? He says, well, Glassy was on the Selstrom. I said, that was our flagship. You know, see, we, we traveled in a group, and we were Division 23, see? And he, uh, so I asked, I said, talking to him, today I'm one of his best buddies. Yeah, <laughs> small world. Yeah, and uh, that's how we got started, you know, and uh and they helped me find people from my ship. They uh, they wrote to the uh, the Navy archives, and they gave us a listing of all the guys on our ship. And we went through the we went through telephone books. Oh, I bet, yeah. Telephone books, looking for people with names. If you ran into a Sullivan, forget it, because you know how many Sullivans. But anyway, we I, I accumulated uh, something like over a hundred people, and you know I called people, and you know I I didn't know who I was, you know I called them, you know, and uh, they, the, uh, and I'd say, well, can I talk to so and so, and he said, and he said, and I named, I mentioned my name, oh, you know, you know, wow. oh, they were so excited about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so then you organize these 12 reunions yeah, around the country? Yeah. The first, uh, the first get-together was in St. Louis. We went there, and uh, we dedicated a model ship. Not us, but th this one ship uh, took that on as a project, you know. And... Uh, they got the high school kids from uh, Arizona. Now, I don't know how this happened, but you should see the beautiful model they made. Oh, it was nine feet long, and they were going to put, they put it on this uh, aircraft carrier that they turned into a uh, museum in uh, New York, and they left it there. And that was our first reunion, the first get-together. Was that like in 19... What year would that have been, do you think? I have all those dates, yeah. but I don't have them with you me. You think it was in the 1950s, do you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. In the 50s. Yeah, I know it is maybe 60s. The 60s. And you're also a member of the VFW here in Niles, right? VFW, American Legion, you name it, you know. And then I belong to the Destroyer Escort Association, 
and then I belong to the Florida. Uh, see, there's Florida is the national headquarters for Destroyer Escort Sailors Association. NIDESA is Northern Illinois De DESA. So there's two different organizations. One is a, we are a charter uh, chapter of the national headquarters. And uh, we even brought back one of the ships from, from the Greeks. And, uh, and uh, they, we, they did, you know, we gave away all those ships. All those ships we gave away, we, we said we'd never have to use them again. And so this one was in Greece. And they told it, they told it back to the, to this country, and, and uh, I'll, I'll give you uh, one of their newspapers and show you what they're they're doing with the uh, with the they overhauled it. They got parts from all these companies free, and they're all they needed was people to do it, and that's the big thing. It cost us a million dollars to tow that thing from uh, from Greece. And that's down in Florida now. No, it's in it's in uh, New York? Buffalo, New York. Oh, Buffalo, New York. It's it's uh, it's it's a museum there now, and uh, they get people going there every year, they volunteer to work there for a week, three days, paint, and they're painting, doing everything for the ship. See, because the government doesn't give us anything. The. Um how do you think um, your your service in the military affected your your life or your outlook on life? I don't think it had any effect on me at all, not at all, because I didn't follow up anything that uh, from the service, you know, because I I actually I actually was uh, I was in the radio room of our ship and. It, I, uh, I was what they call a uh, radio man striker. Is that what you did most of the time? Yeah. When, so you weren't always the... Um, Jack, uh, that was a very short... Short time. Most of the time you were uh, radio. They, uh, they radio. you were a striker in the radio room. What they mean is, is like an apprentice in the radio room. And uh, I, uh, what I... Did I go through already? Yeah, we're uh, just moving over now on to uh, side two. Sorry for the uh -huh. interruption. So you were a uh, striker two? Uh -huh. You were a striker in the... Yeah, I was a radioman striker. In other words, I had to do all, all the paperwork for them, and uh, we even helped with decoding messages. You know, me <coughs> you know how they worked it. They used to, uh, there was, nobody could send a message off their ship. Nobody. It was what they call radio silence. And what they, they did is they had Radio New York and Radio San Francisco, and they were the ones that sent out the messages. And it was up to the ships to pick up these messages what they were sending out. There was a lot of weather reports and a lot of things, you know. And uh, so you had to copy all these messages, not the message, the heading of this uh, of the uh, message. If it, if it didn't pertain to you, you didn't uh, you didn't type it out. So. So was there a code book that you yeah. had to use? Yeah, it was a code. What kind of code was it? Uh, Oh, it was very complicated. No, they, they, nobody, even the Japanese couldn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So, you must have known about some things before everybody else on the ship did, oh, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, it was funny because the captain always called me in one time and he says, "Who are you?" 
And I says, why? He says, you're always being paged. I says, well, I'm, I'm in the radio room, and, you know, they're, they're always need me or something, you know. So so did your time on duty then, would, would your different shifts in the in the radio room, like you might be on through the night or... Oh, what? When you, did you have certain shifts that you had to cover certain time periods? You had to be on duty in the radio room? Oh, yeah. You had... It was uh, four and eight, uh, what they call four hours on and eight hours off. That was the schedule. So sometimes you'd be working at night? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 24 hours a day. You, you couldn't even light a cigarette on the outside of the ship yeah. because uh, the submarines could pick that up. Yeah. So did, you, did they have beer on the ship? They did, but it, uh, it wasn't available only in port. Uh, did know. they show you movies on the ship? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, they didn't show them uh, when we were at sea because the ship moved so much, you know. Yeah. And we didn't have any high-class uh, equipment for that. So was it, how did people relax? Did they play a lot of cards or... Yeah. Read or... Dice, nice. everything, gambling, you know. On your ship, did they do any of those, um, like when you're crossing the equator for the first time or something, did they play tricks on you? No, know, we, we never crossed the equator. Uh -huh. We we crossed the time zone, but not the equator. So nobody played any tricks on people no, no, or we didn't, dunked them in the water or something? Mm -hmm. So I don't know mo how much more I could tell you, and uh, well, we'll lot. see what you come up with. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think we're probably coming to the end of the uh, of the interview. Is there anything that you'd like to add that we haven't talked about or that comes to mind? As I say, we can always add something to this if 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 you think there's something important. Well, there's nothing important. Not but uh, there was a lot of things that went on. You know that. You know, like. Uh, I'll never forget I, this guy, he was a quartermaster, and he was a little guy, you know, and he was so drunk. I brought him back on my shoulder, <laughs> you know, I mean, things like that w w happened, you know. Yeah. But you seem to have, it was, it's, you seem to be very happy to, rec to Oh yeah, yeah. The, uh, was, we didn't it was a have a uh, happy experience. Yeah. yeah, you know, we didn't. Uh, we did, there was nothing bitter. Yeah, among the men. You know. And it was a well-run ship. And yeah, uh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And um, did you enjoy meeting all these different people from different parts of the oh, country? Yeah, you wouldn't believe how successful some of these people are that uh, uh, were on our ship. You know, they were ordinary sailors. And then all of a sudden, they were very successful. One, one guy, he owned a printing company after he left uh, the ship, you know. I contacted And uh, when we got to the reunion, this is what some of these guys were doing. Well, Mr. Plasinski, thank you very much for coming in. I, uh, I, I hope I helped you. You did. It's wonderful. I didn't realize the, uh, the Coast Guard actually staffed Navy ships. Because I, I have interviewed men who were in the well, destroyer escorts, but they were Navy guys. I didn't know the Coast Guard did it. Oh, I yeah. couldn't figure that out. And, uh, and you were in the Atlantic and the Mediterranean and the Pacific and the China Sea, yeah. and that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You've covered a lot of miles. Oh, yeah. Was, you, know, it, you, you know, you pulled into some of these, you know, like uh, Okinawa. That was a disaster, you know. Because uh, they they had a big battle right in the in the bay, you know, and there were ships sunk all over, you know, and then we ran into a typhoon. Oh, the uh, they just, they gave us orders everybody to leave the port because it was safer for us to be out in the ocean than it was in the. Uh, Harbor, in the harbor. In fact, when we came back, 
<coughs> when we came back from the um, um, when we when uh, they send us out uh, out of the port, uh, harbor, we went out, and uh, after the storm was passed by, we came back in. There were some of these big freighters, you know, like you see pictures, were turned over from the typhoon. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Blazinski, you said something um, that when you were discharged, they gave you an interesting physical. Yeah. What was that? I, I said, you know, what I told you, that they lined us up, and we were all nude, you know, and this doctor walked down the aisle, you know, he was a line of men from here to that other wall, and the doctor would walk, you know, you were facing each other, all right, and he, the doctor would walk down the aisle, uh, and then he'd say, reverse it, um, how do you, do you about say? face or something? About face. And then he'd come back out and he said, okay, you guys are all all right. You can go home. <laughs> that was an easy physical. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to tell you one more thing. And I, uh, you interrupted me now. I forgot uh, about this, you know. I can't think of it now. Okinawa and the freighters and the typhoon? Oh, yeah. This is a real touching story. Um, we pulled in the Okinawa, see, and uh, this, one of the fellows on our ship's brother was on the Okinawa, and he asked the captain if he could go ashore and uh, and see if he can find his brother. He did. He brought him back to the ship, and uh, so the the captain says, well, what would you like to eat? He says, what do you mean? He's been on K rations for all these months, or I don't know. And uh, so, you know, we had fresh eggs, and we had, you know, I mean, we lived like kings compared to them. And uh, we made them, I think, breakfast or something, I don't know, with egg, fresh eggs and milk and everything, you know. And... Uh, it was very touchy to see this guy enjoy him, and then he had to go back. <laughs> so he would have been a Navy man then? Or was he Navy or Army? No, no, he was in the Marine. He was a Marine. Yeah. Mm. That's all that was on the Okinawa. Okinawa. Yeah. So uh, I, what I'll do is I'll see if I can find some... Uh, you want this picture, right? Yeah, if I, I, I think I'll stop the tape recorder now and say thank you. And then I'll go upstairs and I'll scan this and I'll make some mm -hmm. photocopies. If you want this picture of the rickshaw? Oh, I want to scan that, yeah, mm -hmm. if I may. So I'm going to turn off the recording now. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three.